Tell the child. Tell her now. You are a hysterical old woman. Shut up. Tell her. Tell her. So she will know you for what you are. You betray us. You Judas. Theater 5 presents The Decoration. Comrade Nina Kalik, come forward. Comrade Nina Kalik, it is with great pleasure I reach this citation for unflinching devotion to the fatherland and to the ideals of the revolution. The people's government bestows its highest civilian decoration. On the ninth day of October, Comrade Carrick, submerging her individual emotion to the stern necessity of the mass struggle, reported a forbidden radio and was instrumental in the capture of eleven traitors who were listening to the despicable lies broadcast by the enemies of the people's government. Comrade, comrade, let me add a personal note. Not for one moment was Comrade Kelly swayed by bourgeois sentimentality. Not for one moment did she listen to the pleas of these foolish and misguided traits. She came personally to me and made her report. Let her act be an example. The execution of this traitor, a lesson, and a voice. Stand beside me. Battalion, pass in review. Of course, you realize that your little exploit doesn't rate all this, comrade. Why do you bother, then? To encourage others to give information. Do I not get something extra because my father was among the traitors? Perhaps. Tell me, how did you feel about that part? I had no feeling, one way or the other. He would not accept the new order. He had to be pushed aside. He was a fool. Good comrade. You have passed your test. What test? My dear comrade, do you think we are so stupid we didn't know your father was listening to foreign broadcasts? Why did you not arrest him? He wanted to know what you would do when you found out. You were followed that night from the moment you left the house. I see. Suppose I had gone for classes and uh, not turned them in because of my father. Then you would have gotten a zero on your final examination. Agents who fail are useless. And then, and then, Grandmother, the man in the uniform placed a bright blue ribbon around her neck, and on it was a red star. The most beautiful thing I have ever seen. And, and the band played, and the people cheered, and Mother stood on the platform, and, and the army marched by her, and... Hush, child. Grandmother, are you crying? Finish your supper. Mother says only children of the foolish capitalists cry. You come from the window. Finish your supper. Oh, I am too excited to eat. Oh, there I go again. I am supposed to hide my feelings. You are never to let the enemy know what you are thinking. Oh. Here they come. The man in uniform drove her home. May God have mercy. Good night, Comrade. Good night. Mother's coming. Oh, Grandmother, I hope she has a star. Mother, Mother, let me see the decoration. Oh, why are you not wearing it? It is not a piece of jewelry, little one. It is worn only on special occasions. <laughs> 
Oh. oh, stop sniveling. Let me see the decoration. Here, here, it is in this case. Oh. You may look at it. It is even more beautiful than I thought. If it were mine, I would wear it every minute. Mother, may I put it on? No, no, child, don't. Why not, if she wishes? Yes, Ella, you may put it on. <laughs> My, it is heavy. I think it is real gold. Look, Grandmother, is it not the most beautiful metal you have ever seen? It is horrible, oh. a disgrace. Don't touch it. Still, leave Ella alone. I would give anything to have one like it. Mother, what must I do to win one? Do not ask questions. Tell the child. Tell her now. That she may know you for what you are. You betray her. You Judas. You are a hysterical old woman. Shut up. Please, please, tell me. Are you ashamed to tell her about the new order? The new order. That God is unknown. The old decencies are marked. The men tremble at the knock of the door. The children are decorated for betraying to death. Those who gave them life. Be still, I tell you. And there's nothing left to live for. I no longer fear you. Tell the child that after you were away for years, we thought you had come home for love of your parents. Tell her how, with sly questions, you set the trap. Father lied to me about where he went. As he lied to me to protect us if he were caught. I had no choice. I had to report him. Mother, did Grandfather do something he should not do? No. There will be no more discussion. Tell her how you followed him that night. It was the ground covered with snow. Tell her how you trapped him with the others listening to the radio. It was forbidden. He knew it. Tell how you ran to the secret police and informed. Oh, Mother got the medal for tattling. Yes, child. Know the truth that you may despise her the rest of your life. This beautiful medal. And speeches at the parade just for telling on Grandfather. Oh, merciful God. Lena, what have you done to this child? Ella, give me the medal and go to bed. Oh, let me wear it just a little more. No. Just to run upstairs so I may see myself in the big mirror? You will give it to me at once. Yes, Mother. No. Go to bed. Yes, Mother. Mother? Yes, what now? Judas? Enter. One moment, Comrade Kallik. You sent for me? The usefulness here is at an end. You have a new assignment. Where is it? And when do I leave? The United States in about two weeks. You will enter at New York and then go on to Washington. What do I do in Washington? Detailed instructions will be given you there. But in general, you will get information to help us compromise the personnel responsible for radio broadcasts to foreign countries. They are that serious? My dear comrade, we don't like to shoot good farmers and technicians, even though they are foolish enough to listen. In some respects, these broadcasts are as dangerous as an atomic bomb. I see. I am honored to have such an important mission. When people listen, it shows a spirit of rebellion and disbelief. And even their music contaminates the air like some insidious fall. I will do my best at all times. I hope so. Some of our agents seem to lose their sense of dedication when they stay in America. They become complacent. You need not worry about me. I have dreamed of helping to destroy America all through my training. Then I was put in a unit of English-speaking comrades. I read American books and papers. I hoped, but I could not be sure. It was all planned. Your trip home was your final test. Fortunately, you passed. Do I travel alone? Your child will go with you. That is part of your usefulness. You are a respectable widow. There will be some important instructions, and the child is not so likely to be searched. 
You will arrive in New York just before the bourgeois Christmas holiday. Travel then will be heavy and the customs overloaded with work. Any other instructions? I have told you all that was told to me. Other instructions will follow. Now, first, you will go to Paris. So go home and pack and be ready to move on at a moment's notice. Very well. Oh, uh, Comrade Kalik. Yes? I hope I have made it clear to you what happens to agents who fail. Perfectly. I am not going to fail. <laughs> Flight 17 are going over. No? Looking for something special? Yeah. Mm. I told the wife I'd be home early to help the kids trim the tree. And me. Just after I told the wife I'd be in all evening, the chief calls me and tells me to get down here. <laughs> What's the dope on Flight 17? It's a half hour late now. Edwin. Uh-huh. And just what are we looking for? Well, it just came through that uh, someone on this flight was, uh, I get this, very likely communist agent with instructions for someone in Washington. Someone? We don't know who? No. Oh, brother. That means checking every last person. And that plane will be loaded. That's right. Well, excuse me. I'd better call my wife and tell her to get her sister to help with the tree. <laughs> We land soon. You know what you are to do if you are questioned or searched? I say nothing. I understand very little English. Yes. What else? Um, I smile at the men if they ask questions. I try to make them like me. Uh, I cry and cling to your dress if they ask too many questions. Good. Now, what about the wrapping on this box? Uh, you... Tell them I have a doll, but if they unwrap it, I try to hold the paper. But if they take it, I make no sign. Remember, Ella, a great deal depends on you. Why is the wrapping so important? That is not for you to know, nor do I, for that matter. Just do as you're told. Yes, Mother. But capitalists are stupid, so there's nothing to worry about it. Nothing at all. But some are brighter than others. It would go hard with me if we were found violating one of their uh, silly rules. Would they put you in prison? And me too? The Americans are very cruel. They might shoot me. Attention, all passengers, flight 17. Stand by for inspection. Please have passports ready. Uh, you hold down the office, Frank. I'll get the boys working on the passengers. Right. You take it. I'm on my way. Yes. Speaking. Yes, sir. Scotty's running them through now. Yes, sir. I'll call the minute we find anything at all likely. What are they going to do? Check our passports and baggage. It should not take long. Form a line, please. Outside the ropes. I'm very sorry. I know you're all anxious to get home, and I'll clear you as fast as possible. <laughs> Now what, Scotty? There's not a thing we can hold anyone on. Hmm. Gonna call the chief? Well, you know what he'll say. Keep looking. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would help a lot if we knew what we were looking for. Still, the chief doesn't pass on a tip if it doesn't come from a reliable source. I know, I know. But suppose they got wise to our undercover man and tipped their carrier off in time to try something else. Could be. Can't hold them all night, you know. I know. We've got to find something or clear them. So? I'm running them through once more, just for luck. Call them in, one at a time. Okay. Who do you want first? Uh, bring uh, that woman with the little girl. They look tired. All right. Uh, come in, please. Oh, are we permitted to go? I'm sorry, not quite yet. Just a few questions, if you don't mind. Of course. Well, let's see now. Uh, there's something I wanted to ask you. Oh, yes. 
when I talked to you before, it struck me that for a European you spoke excellent English. <laughs> Thank you. Why is that? My kids take four years of French, and it's all they can do to translate a fancy menu. <laughs> Perhaps in Europe, foreign languages are taught at an earlier age. Well, now, Ella, is this your first trip on a plane? Oh, she understands very little English. Oh. I thought they began English early in Europe. Well, she's only nine. We usually start languages at ten. Why did you decide on English for your language? It's required. The child has to learn it as a second language. Hear that, Frank? The kids in Europe have to learn English. Yeah. From the way my kids speak, maybe I should send them to Europe. <laughs> uh, what's in the box, Ella? She's got a doll. It's been checked. Oh. What is that? Huh? Oh, she's pointing to the tree. Ella, that's a Christmas tree. Hasn't your child seen a Christmas tree before? Oh, never one like this with electric lights and oh, so elaborately decorated. Uh, she'll see plenty of them here. If you're in New York for the holidays, take her to Radio City. Oh, I will. Now, may we go? Yes. Sorry to have delayed you so long. Not at all. In Europe, one is accustomed to rigid inspection. Well, good night. Have a happy holiday. Thank you. Ella? Tom? Ella? She seems to be interested in the star on top of the tree. Ella, do you like that star? Hmm? Well, she can have it. Just a minute, I'll take it off. Please, no trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Here you are, Ella. Ella, dear, what do you say when one gives you a gift? Thank you. But I do not want that shabby star. We really huh? must hurry. Come, Ella. But it's no good. Well, how do you like that? It's funny. Uh, just a minute there. I apologize for my child. She's tired and upset. I thought she didn't understand English. Well, only a little. She's picked up a few words. Ella, you said you didn't want the star. Why not? I want a star like Mother's. Ella! What? Oh, you mean that little trinket I bought in Paris, don't you? Uh, just a moment. Let the child speak. Uh, tell me about this star, Ella. It is a beautiful red star. On a bright blue ribbon so that it can be worn around her neck. Uh-huh. She promised me she would let me wear it, but she did not bring it with her. Pay no attention to her. She's just an imaginative child and likes to dramatize herself. She makes up all kinds of fantastic stories. I'd like to hear some of them. Go on, Frank. Uh, did she buy this star? No. Well, how did she get it? A man in uniform put it around her neck. And then all the people cheered, and and hundreds of men in uniform marched by, and they saluted her. Why did the man give her this decoration? Ella. She got it for telling on Grandfather. She's a child. She doesn't know what she's saying. And you've no right to question her. Be quiet. Your mother told something about your grandfather, and, and she was decorated? What was it she told, Ella? He was listening to a radio with other men. And the police arrested them. I see. If I tell you a secret, will you give me a decoration? What secret? About your mother? I will not tell unless you promise me a star like hers. You'll get a star and the blue ribbon. But I can't promise you the cheers and salutes. Now, what is this secret? My doll... Ella! Ella! I am your mother. My doll is wrapped in paper. She doesn't want you to see. No, no, you don't. Oh. Now, sit quiet or I'll have to use the cups. Frank, take that box along with the wrapping. Get them to the lab. Right. It's probably just information, but there might be a bomb to destroy the evidence. I'll have to take them down to headquarters. You phone the chief. Okay. You're not going to hurt Mother, are you? Ella. Don't you have any idea what you've just done? I don't want her hurt. I just want a pretty decoration like hers. That's all. Presented The Decoration, written by Joseph Cochran and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Boshik Shimak, 
Kate Wilkinson, Evelyn Juster, Abby Lewis, Owen Jordan, and Marco Daniels. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, M.C. Brock. Script editor, Jack Stevenson.